Today we're gonna to talk about adding value and getting more for what we do. Who's up for doing that? Is there a lot of pressure on our business around commissions right now? Yes. So let me ask you this, who's been in the business more than 30 years? Raise your hand. Few of us. Who's been in the business more than 40 years? Even less. Hey, watch this. Does anybody know what the second franchise, national franchise was in the United States back in the 70s? Does anybody know what the second one was? It was Help You Sell in 1978. What does that tell you? What's that tell you? Do you know that Assist to Sell started in 1987? Do you know that there was a story about brokerages and commissions in uh, Realtor.com in 1996? And in 02, there was an article about it in Wall Street Journal. In, 0, in 0, uh, uh, 08, there was an article in Forbes magazine that the whole industry was gonna change. Is there a lot of like, oh my God right now? Is there? All right, we're gonna put those fears at ease because when a market gets really hot, those kind of things happen, okay? And we've been in a pretty hot market, but we're gonna have some experts here. Today is about you all and them sharing what they do to help out. We're gonna, we're gonna hear their stories and what they do, and we're gonna have time at the end for a Q&A as well. So, Carolyn, why don't you just start off, tell them a little bit about yourself, whatever you wanna go through and talk about your business and how it is right now. Okay, so for I've been in the industry for 24 years. Um, I'm into my third year with Tom Ferry Coaching at this point. And as um, an individual agent, I was pretty much running myself, one assistant, and I had um, a strong sphere that I worked up to. So I always did about four or 500,000 a year. Um, and after joining Tom Ferry and getting the best coach ever, um, I, you know, last year I doubled to 1.1, which I did, you know, 143 listing appointments last year, and my average um, list um, that I listed off the ones I went on that I secured was 94.5%. So um, I got most of them, and this year I've already listed over like 130. So not this year we're bad. tracking we're tracking 1.4. Not bad, not bad. Fantastic, Jackie. Well, I don't have those numbers, but. Um very impressive. Uh, I'm Jackie Othen from Toronto. I've been a realtor now for seven years. This is my seventh year. I'm a mom of a bunch of kids, have a passion for dogs. I have five dogs. Got a very busy life and a wonderful but small team who's here. Um, yeah, the business has exploded and it's not quite where I'd like it yet. I'm sure many of you would think the same, but we're very well on track. We're at about 650 this year so far. We should close out at about 1.2. Nice. Um, I run a small and intimate team and we're growing. I love what I do and I love my clients. That's the most important thing. Nice, we're gonna to touch on that here. Hi, I'm Steve Cohen, uh, New York City. I've been in the business 18 years. We have a small, tight team of five and my sexy, hot coach, Vonda, is here. And <laughs> um, I've been coaching with Vonda for six years. Um, I looked at my numbers last night and my first year, uh, we went from 45 million to 95 million. And wow. we're, that was five years ago. And um, we're continuing to grow and um, the pressure's on. We gotta keep going, so. Nice. So let me ask you, we're, I want to ask each of you all the same question is, how, uh, what, what do you think sets you apart? What's your value add on your, let's maybe talk at that, that uh, dining room table, that face-to-face -face or that pitch where you're with a client. What do you think sets you apart? Um, for us, I think what we've learned is that it's about for people trust us, they like us, and then we have the experience and the wisdom to back it up. But it's, it's, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's about rapport. And, um, and so we, we come in and we establish that rapport. We're also, we're still hungry. And I say that to people that, yes, we have all this great experience and we've worked with people and we've probably been referred to you, but we're still hungry and we're out there to, to sell your property and do a good job for you. We also, I talk about making the process as seamless as possible, that it does not have to be a headache and a hassle and you know so so let me ask you we hear that word rapport a lot how do you build rapport give me some examples or what do you do you know to, to create that connection a little tighter with them um i think authenticity is really important i i can only be myself and 
I'll work for some people, hopefully more than, than not, uh, and some people I maybe won't jive with, but I, I'm just myself and there's certainly, there's enough to go around. And I, I really believe, I think that's why I love being in this environment. There's such a environment of giving and sharing and I, we're known in our industry. I think we have a great reputation and we work well with other brokers. Brokers like working with us. Um, we've been on deals. I'm, buying away a bit from the, the, uh, the seller or the buyer, but where I've had brokers, we will, if there's multiple bids on something where, and we're representing the buyer, a seller's broker may go with us because they know it'll be a pleasant process and we're professional and we get it done well. So your reputation stands out. Reputation, and then in terms of rapport, you know, sitting at the dining room or kitchen, kitchen table, um, again, we're authentic, we are who we are, we're honest, and we, we don't lie, we, we tell it like it is, whether it's pricing or, you know, we'll never insult someone, but you know, everyone thinks their home, not everyone, but a lot of people think <laughs> their homes are a lot more than they actually are. But aren't you afraid of losing someone by not saying what they wanna hear no. or? Well, thank God, we're at a position now. Well, listen, we wanna get every piece of business, but I, no, I don't wanna take on a listing that A, the seller, Tom was talking about this might be a real you know, pain in the ass and I don't want to deal with on a way overpriced property that's not going to sell. We'd ra we just got, we've taken on three new listings and God willing another fourth and two of those are ones that they called us back. We're now the second broker because we told them pricing. They didn't go with us because of the pricing. They priced in one case a million over what we told them and now they're coming back to us. So that, you know, we were honest and authentic and... So, hey, maybe we want to be the second agent nowadays. Yeah, or the third. Or the yeah. third. Or yeah. all, all something yeah. you never know. So. Do what you got to do. How about you, Jackie? Uh, I think what sets us apart is we do a lot. We offer a lot. I'm lucky enough to have a staging company that I own out of default. I don't recommend it. Don't make that note down. <laughs> don't jot that down. So we offer a lot of services. A lot. And when we promise people we're going to do something, we always do it. So we're very upfront and we deliver everything that we say that we're going to. Um, and yeah, there's no bullshit with me. I f my thought is if I'm going to have to lie today at some point, my personality is going to com come out later. And I'd rather just be me and upfront, whether you like it or not. And I tell people upfront, I'm not for everyone. And as much as they're interviewing me, I'm there to make sure that we're a good fit. So I think... If you can provide value and you do it and the client can track that you've done every single thing you can, you've said you're going to do, then you've done your job. Okay, perfect. How about you, Carolyn? What's your value add? So I think my value add is that basically when, because I go on a lot of listing appointments, is that you have to add value as to what you do and what sets you apart from everybody else. So Usually when you're getting commission objections, it's because of the fact that you haven't added enough value. Um, and so that all goes into your presentation. But I think, you know, overall too, it's walking in um, to a house with confidence and know your numbers, know your market. And, you know, then people, they feel that energy and that trust and, and they want to go with that. Okay, good. So now let's talk about the real nuts and bolts. When you get that objection, when you're there and they're like, hey, I've got somebody that'll do it for less or whatever, well, how do you handle that? How do you handle someone that is giving you a little pushback? That someone that asked me if I would do it for less? Yes. I can tell you, well, I know you gotta watch her presentation because I got her slides from New York and they're a killer. Like, I don't get very many commission objections. Okay. But Did you hear that? She doesn't get many objections. Why do you think? Because they're, they would be embarrassed to ask. Because when they see all that I do, like if you lay everything out on the table, and they, I, most of the time they're like, well, do I have to pay more for this? Yeah, that's exactly and I'm like, <laughs> no, I'll include it in the 6%. So wait a minute, whatever. they'd be embarrassed to ask and they're like, uh, they couldn't imagine like taking away anything from what you're doing. Yeah, and like he said, there's some people that they're not, you know, it's the whole theory of next. Some people aren't the people you want to work with. Like if that's all they're focused on, but I will tell people, you know, I don't get why you're focusing on 1%. Like why aren't you focused on getting a higher net? Right. Like, you know, so you just have to, you know, sometimes you have to go at it with them a little bit about it, but it really, if you add enough value, they're really concerned you're going to charge them extra. 
So you're going to stick to them making more. Yeah. The bottom line, not what they're paying. Yeah. Perfect. Good. So, hey, Jackie, tell them a little bit about what is your belief around customers and your customer service? <laughs> uh, you have to care. It shows up in everything. So when we take a client on, we have them for life and they don't fall out of our system. Our, you know, I'm in touch probably quarterly. There are clients that I check on weekly. And Jeff knows, I've told you, there are clients who are seniors. I have a very, very big population of seniors. And those people just don't get their house sold and move on and show up at a client event. They get taken care of in a real serious way. It comes out of my personal time. Um, so medication being picked up for seniors. Yeah, I do that. Uh, grocery drops, especially with our long winters. If I know that there are people that can't get out to run an errand, right. I'll send my assistant to run errands for them, whatever they need. Like they're, they're family to me. Where did that so, come from? Where'd you, where, that's, that comes from something deep. Where'd probably you my dad. My dad was a really big caretaker. I remember having breakfast with the homeless man when we were really little. He, the guy was begging for money. My dad's like, no, you breakfast with my family. And we thought that was very odd, but that sort of mindset of taking care never left. Right. So, and yeah. you, you'd mentioned you have a, a feeling of giving without what? Giving without? Receiving? Yeah. yeah. Like I expect expectation. nothing. Right. Expect nothing. You can't get into this and start to give people, especially people who are in need with the expectation that they're gonna reciprocate. That's not what it's about. This is about me filling an emotional bucket. So like I say, it comes out of personal time, which my coach doesn't always love, but it has to come from somewhere. It can't come from your prospecting time. So you have to make sure that when you take a client on, that you give a really big shit about them because they're gonna be a big part of your life. Love it. Give a lot of shit about your customers. That's it. That's it. Perfect. How about you, Steve, when you, get, when you get that objection? You know, we all have it. Um, what do you go to? Where's your, what's your uh, go-to play? Well, I, th I think that breaking, to, if you actually show them how much money it actually is, right. what a half a percent or 1% is on a certain uh, property, it, it really diminishes it. Um, listen, if, if we're up against it, sometimes we'll find a way to say, you know, what we will say is I've taken things on and if we can't sell it within a certain period of time or that type of thing, then we can talk about it. Right. Um, but I think really when we break it down and show the dollars and cents, what the actual dollar amount is, it really, uh, it sometimes it takes it off the table. So what's your average uh, sales price? Um, this year is probably 2.8. Okay, great. How do, how do you handle those commit, the, like you see all these shows where everybody's making all this money. How do you, like it's a lot of money. How do you handle that, that dialogue with a seller about what you're doing? That we're getting paid a lot of money? Yes. Well, if we're getting paid that much money, it's because their properties are worth that much money. <laughs> um, and listen, all of our deals aren't like that. We do, well, for New York, average size deals. Um, but it's, listen, the cost of living's more in New York too. So we're all like, <laughs> right. it's just- It's all relative, right? It's relative, yeah. And we also, it's not, everybody counts everyone else's money and you know, uh, you know, you, if I sell a certain property and there's some publicity about it, everybody thinks you, they know what the commission is and they, know, they don't realize your marketing cost, your team's cost. The person that referred it maybe wants a referral fee and down the line, Good. so yeah. Not I mean, all I'm very grateful, but it's, it's not always what it seems. Gotcha. So uh, on the um, presentation, tell me, walk through just a little bit of a pitch. How does that go for you? What is, what is a normal pitch or how does that go? What does it start with? Um, we come in, we have some, well, the first thing we do is we ask to see the property and we walk through the property uh, and then we sit down and more times than not, we just talk and I never open my presentation packet um, and it's thorough and it's beautiful but more times than not I'm just walking them through it and telling them by the way it's all in here if you need to see it some people that are really numbers driven will break out the comps but again we usually just talk that through they actually don't even want to see the numbers um, and the one thing that I will show them are uh, videos that we've done because we, we tell them we do videos on every property. We do a lot with social media and we also show them the, all of our marketing pieces that are being sent out or the, that they're, you know, the buyers are walking away with. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our visual and we let them know that we're professional all the way through. So that's the tangible we want to show them. 
Uh, but again, more times than not, we actually don't open the packet. We just have a conversation. How about any pre-marketing stuff? Do you uh, pre-sell yourself, send anything before you go over there? Um, no, we don't. And I've, you know, I'm not saying we shouldn't, um, but we haven't yet. The one thing I'll ask is if someone calls, it's New York, everybody's moving so freaking fast. I get a call, they want to meet you in two days, and it's, um, you know, what I will say is, you know, how long have you had the property? Have you done any work to the property? So we can at least try to figure out what the, play, play, the apartment or the home is worth before the townhouse is worth before we walk into it. The, if we really feel strongly about the price, we'll give the price right there. Many times we'll say now that we've seen it, we just want to go back and fine, ta fine tune some pricing and look at other comps and we'll get back to you. Nice. Um, someone said in the last few days, I always ask, try to ask what, or I always ask, try to get the seller to tell me what they think the place is worth. Um, and some people are very open about it and some not. Okay. So. How often are you doing like a two-step process? Where, you're how do going you know? over, taking a look at it, coming back, or do you know the market so well, you're, you're dialed in, you're just It's there. a one-step process. Okay. It's, no two we meet with them and then we, usually it's a phone call. And then maybe a number of phone calls. Gotcha. So we just took, we had one meet, oh, we just took two properties. It's three investors that own it. So we had one meeting to see the two properties. Then we had a lot of phone calls. Then we met with the one, the three for a coffee for 45 minutes and that's it. Nice. So the, I just have to, the million dollar listings of the world, no one is having lunch to make offers. It's all done over the phone, but that would be boring <laughs> television. So, right. it doesn't look you know, it doesn't right. work that way. Right. So. Awesome. Now, hey, Jaggy, tell them about your presentation, because I know you're going to go through that in a little bit of detail tomorrow. But in a nutshell, what do you do? How? Because we heard this great story uh, a few months ago, and I think a lot of people I have took it. 30 slides, 30, maybe 35 now. Slides, uh, just to clarify, they're pieces of laminated, laminated car paper, I guess so, cardstock. Um, they're laminated so that they can endure. So if you're going to do them, you want to laminate them. I bring them out. So I usually get, hey, you're you bring a lot, and I say that's because we do a lot. Yeah. Um, I see the house much like you, and then I bring out the presentation. I'll say, would you like me to get, go through the presentation? Sometimes they're not interested, sometimes they're just ready to sign. Um, sometimes they want to see it, and so I would look around and sort of casually say, you know, we're going to need a big table because there's a lot for you to review, preferably the dining room mm -hmm. table. And I don't put them all out together. I have a really big, um, beautiful gray box that they're in. I open it up, and I start to lay them out one at a time. And each one is a talking point. So if you're not a good presenter, that's problematic. But so for example, one of them um, will start with, gosh, which one do we start with? We don't start Can with Can I kind show of a couple? Yeah. We've got a few. Is do that you? right? Yeah, yeah that these help? are the Would old ones. Help out if we went through For that? sure. Let's do that. There's a couple right okay, there, Okay, so there's right? Facebook. So the digital stuff we deal with later. Um, basically what we start with is, it's not coming soon, but I'll call it coming soon. We'll talk about staging, we talk about cleaning, and we say we professionally clean every single house before we go to market because it's important to me that you know, it meets my standards. Right. And by, they've met me, they, or they've talked to me, they know I'm tough. So I'll say, you know, it's to make life easier for you and to make sure the house is show ready. Then I'll go on to the staging and say we offer complimentary services. I honor the staging will remain in place until the house is sold. Doesn't matter, matter if the house is 300,000, 500,000, 5 million. From the day that it's brought in, it stays till the day we're sold. That's my guarantee. Gotcha. Um, let me see what else we got. I talk about my photographer. He works for a magazine, and I tell people I don't have a $99 photographer, some people who are charging less. And I, I flesh out the commission throughout. So I'll say, you know, you may work, or you may have met with people who are willing to charge less. I can't because I hire the best. Mm -hmm. And best in class people don't charge $99 for photography, and I hire them for everything. Um, we run social media campaigns, and I lead them through what digital campaigns look like. We talk about what Tom advocates, which is every single Monday morning, once we sign a listing, our team has a meeting, we whiteboard who the avatar is, and I say to them, we'd love to hear who you think the buyer of your home is, because in most cases, that's the best way to get the marketing started. Uh, talk about how we'll identify the age categories, their particular areas of interest, and then we run the target advertising to that. Every single one of the a mega open house, we talk about the importance of that. Not everybody buys into the idea of an open house, and I you know, offer it up, and I say it's at your discretion. If they're super private, they don't have to do it. But I tell them our open houses get between 85 and 100 people on a Saturday. Um, we have a door knocking. We have wine and cheese in you know, downtown core. That's a huge hit. 
Uh, we door knock as a team every Wednesday, Thursday leading up to an open house. And so I say, I'm out there physically with the team. We door knock 500 homes in your neighborhood. And our assistant will also circle dial another 500 homes in your neighborhood to make sure that our open house is a success. So every single thing by the time it's laid out, it's true. I don't think that they're embarrassed, but people are like, okay, so what do I pay for and what do you pay for? Yeah. And I say, I pay for everything, but there's an order in which it has to run. And so if someone says, you know, can you do it for less? We physically pick up the slides that cost a lot and then it looks <laughs> like a jack-o'-lantern with all the teeth missing. And I say, right. but you know, without that strategy A to Z, it's not as effective because each of these has an intention behind it, a dollar value behind it, and it runs systematically to ensure their success and their financial success, right? So it's not for me. You've broken down every point into a slide. Yes. And then taken away. I mean, I think visually, that's so old school, but visually but it, works. Yeah. it works, doesn't yeah. it? And I don't do it on an iPad. A lot of people have said, you know, why don't you do it on a laptop? The idea is it's tactile, it's all over the table. So when we get to feature sheets and brochures, I physically hand them out so they can actually see what see the that. last five or six homes look like that we put to market right. and they're tactile. And I say to people, I spend five times what another agent does on feature sheets because when you leave my listing, first of all, you walk in, it's squeaky clean, smells good, it's staged, but you have something to talk about. It's like going to a model home. You leave with marketing material, you know, and husbands and wives get into the car and they're like, hey, remember this one? They're not looking at that crappy feature sheet. They're looking at the ones probably like you do mm -hmm. and you do and looking through them and it creates the dialogue and the emotion and it gets everything flowing. How long is your listing presentation? It's a good hour. Mm -hmm. um, Does anyone cut you off and just say, I don't want to do this, just cut to Hardly. Well, where do I sign? Hardly. I'd be like, where do um, I sign after like the fourth Yeah, month? and sometimes I'm like, I didn't bring a listing package. I think I've got them in the car because I know that there's conversation that has to be fleshed out between the couple. Mm. And so I'll deliberately go to the car <laughs> go get some out of the trunk. Usually I have them, but I don't want to be so Wait, did everybody pick presumptive. up on that? Did everybody pick up what she, how many times do you do a presentation where they get off, they try to get you off the hook by saying they need to do what? Have a talk. They need to talk. Yeah. Sounds great. We need to talk. She's already preparing for that happening. And I say, it'll give you guys an opportunity to have That's a chat. Genius. Jot down your questions. I'll be right back. And, and it's also not salesy. I'm not salesy. I don't like right. to be pushy with paper. Right. So sometimes truly it's just to break the conversation because right. you know, they're not ready to sign. They just need to have right. that chat. They just need a couple minutes alone to say, are you good with her? This is good. Yeah. So, whoa, okay, yeah. wait. Yeah. Right? Sometimes they'll say, well, we don't think we need this. You know, but it all correlates to value. Everybody thinks they don't need staging, but it's free. Why would right. you say no? Right, right. Love you it. know, I can take you to see 10 homes. Where's the, what's Where's the, the next? Other? There's, there's the staging. There's the cleaning. Yeah. Like you're packaging and marketing everything you do. Yes. You know, and I bet there's so many agents who are like, oh, yeah, I do that. I do that. I do that. But do you realize when you don't package it or market it, it's it's just kind of like you ever had a company that says, oh, we take all coupons. You know what I'm talking like? You've got to have it. This is fantastic. And cleaning. I, we have four ladies that go in to clean and I tell them that's for their convenience. It's really not. But I, I spin it so that they realize I don't want you to be out of your house and want one cleaning lady cleaning for 10 hours. We have a crew of four people that come in. They know what I expect. They're gonna make it easy so you're in and out in three hours your house is turned around and show ready. Is she giving good value? What do you think? Good ideas here, amazing. How about, uh, so there, there's the photography, there's the coming yeah. soon. Yeah, we talk about what a coming soon campaign is and we talk about why getting the sign on the lawn is super important, why digital advertising before you go live is critical. Sometimes I actually divulge spend, I'll say we put $500 Pre, pre-list into coming right. soon. We, you know, target market it, vertical living. We do post, they have no clue. Like it's when you fantastic. talk digital with architects, they're clueless. I'm sold, where do I No sign? offense. This is the best. How Let about, me go get it from the car. And then, then, then <laughs> oh, you've got your line. website. That's Randy Ora. I don't know if he's at Summit, but um, if anybody Googles his presentation, truly all of this was inspired off of his stuff. So this is awesome. You are indeed Randy's stuff. Yeah. And then Carolyn has r and d your My stuff. stuff. <laughs> right, there you go. That's what, that's what we're here for, right? Yeah. How about, there's a little bit, there's a, a slide around. Oh, this. Don would want me to talk about this. So there's a menu of services. I hardly open this and I really should. So the interior of this has the commission broken up. Five, I'm not six in Toronto, I'm 5%. So we have, oh, there it is, two and a half, three percent and custom. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the custom. I've fronted renovations for people in financial distress in the past, okay. so they don't have the money 
we'll right. spend 40, we'll make you another right. 200,000. So that's truly what Platinum is in addition to all of that. But when you let people see this, and we've changed this now, and they have the right to choose. Nobody want, people want platinum for the cost of silver. So sometimes I can say, with your permission, I'd like to offer you our gold package right. for the silver because they've referred me a ton of business and it's right. easier than having them bring me down to 4.5%. Right. You just offer more services. So you're packaging it. Yes. Fantastic. Awesome. How about you, Carolyn? What was tell, tell them about your presentation. How does that go? How so for me, I, she offers a lot. So I pulled some of that stuff out because I ain't doing all that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, basically for me, when I go into a presentation, the first thing I want to do is walk the house so I can see what the condition is. But one of the first questions I always ask them is, you know, what would they like to achieve from our meeting today? Because if they tell me, when can you bring the photographer out? Well, I'm just gonna get the paperwork out and start signing it. So, um, so I do limit, like my presentation will be shortened for others and longer for some if they say we're, because I do a lot of expires. So if they say we're interviewing five more agents, because most of them are, um, then I'm gonna take them through all the marketing and sell my value. Um, so that's kind of. So you go, um, you know, you're, you're doing a lot around expired. So there's a lot of times, you know, you're competing against a lot of agents on these presentations. Most of the time. How do you handle when, you know, oh, like uh, we want to, we want to think about it, talk about it. This sounds great, but we're going to meet a couple other people. Maybe let you and I role so, play that dialogue a little bit. I'll be the seller and hey, it all sounds good, Carolyn, but uh, you know, a lot to think about. We're going to get back to you. Really? What is it you have to think about, Jeff? Well, it's a big decision. You know, we've had it on the market before and it didn't work out. And, uh, you know, we like what you've got to say, but, you know, we just want to think about it. Or well, I just want to think okay, about it. Okay, okay. I'm glad you like what I had to say, but let me just ask you a question. Do you think that my marketing is effective and that what I do works? Uh, obviously, yes, yes. Okay, all right. And you told me that you guys already bought your other house, right? Yes. So you're moving? You've got to be down in Florida, yeah. So what is there to think about? You have to sell your home. You have the best agent sitting right here in front of you. What is it you're going to think about tonight? Um, <laughs> how to get out of this question. Um, but you know what, Jeff, to be honest, rather than you talking to another agent who you're not going to find anybody better than what I already do, why don't you just go ahead? You need to get your deck stained. I noticed that when we were walking through the house. Okay. And you really need to get the carpet replaced okay. upstairs. Okay. So why don't you let me start my marketing? You start what you have to do so we can make this work as a team and bring your house to market and get you the most money. Isn't that your goal? That is my goal. So let's get going. Sounds like a plan. All right. What does she have 100%? What does she got? She got confidence. This is all, this, our business is all about confidence. Where do you get that confidence from, uh, Carolyn? Um, you know, I guess after you go on all these listing presentations, I don't know. I just, I just know that if, when you go in and you walk out, the one thing I've learned from all these listings is that you can't, like you're, you have a small community and you're very nice with people and you're caring. <laughs> I love that. But it's Canada. But no, I, <laughs> was that an insult? You don't have good clients. No. I mean, I do have good clients, but you know what I'm saying? You you just like they're interviewing four or five agents, and it can be like a little Shark Tank. You know what I mean? So when I go in, it's just like you know we're I'm there to list the house, and if I want to go in and be nice, and um, <laughs> I'm never I'm never going to hear from them again. So when they say, oh, thank you so much, you were so great. I know when I leave, they're it's hardly ever they're gonna call. So I have to press, but the one way that you retain the most listings is by our appointments, is some people won't make the decision, they can't. We're waiting on our relocation company tomorrow, and tomorrow we're gonna know um, if we definitely have this move. I always ask them if they have another appointment. I always ask them, you know, um, well, how many have you interviewed so far? If you interviewed two, okay, well, let me ask you. I'm the third one. How would I rate if you rated us from one to three? And if they say two, I say, well, what did I miss? Did I, did I not deliver something or explain something? I just want to make sure what can I do to make myself number one choice. And if they're interviewing more, I just tell them no matter what they say, don't list until you talk to me because they might be bringing up stuff that's irrelevant. 
and I don't want you to get all this information confused. So if you're done with all your interviews on Friday at five, what if I give you a call around eight and see how things are coming along? So you have to have an end date. You can't walk out of the appointment and say, oh, I did so good and they just love me because you're never gonna hear from them again. Gotcha, that's it. So let me ask all of y'all, if you look back on your career, what's, one, what's the one thing you would change? What was one thing you would change? That I would change now or have changed in the past? Change in the past. I would have joined coaching a long time ago. Oh, come on. This isn't about coaching. No, what I'm would... serious because okay. it, it, just being a part of this organization, I think I've been doing this for 24 years, making four or 500000 a year, and I'll, I'll do over $2 million this year. It's like I would have done this like a long time ago. <laughs> I just didn't know all of these tools and all of these things were available. So gotcha. really, that's, it's been a game changer for me. Love so. it. How about you, Jackie? What would you have changed? I probably would have been fearless earlier, I wish. Okay. Um, I heard one little lesson that changed my career from a mentor years ago. Uh, I did an open house, my follow-up was terrible, and they registered, they didn't put a phone number, I'd email, they didn't hear anything. And I'm sharing this because it's important. My mentor was sitting across from me and he's like, did you call them? And I said, no, and he said, why? And I said, their phone number's not on the sheet, it's creepy, I'm not looking them up. And I'm glad he pressed on me for a couple days. He's like, did you call? And I left them a message. I Googled the guy and he was, you know, the headmaster of a very elite private school in Toronto. I said, I can't call him. I'm not in their leagues. I'm a brand new agent. And he pressed on me the other day, the day after. And he said, did you reach him? And I said, no, that one follow-up call in my business is more than $750,000 of business. Whoa. That one little 75 year old lady has led me to dozens and dozens and dozens of clients. I sold her house, I sold nine on her street. So be brave about follow-up um, and relentless in your follow-up. Love it, love it. How about you, Stephen? Um, I, would, I would have asked for the business early on. And um, I, I remember a number of years ago, um, a developer who was a good friend of mine and was very successful, I was handling some of his personal stuff, a lot of, all of his personal real estate in the city. And, but I said to him, you know, John, why aren't you using us for your developments? And he said, well, we're in this. And I, and I said, you know, I'd love to set up a meeting with me and Pam Liebman, our CEO. And he, I remember it, it took, I felt like it was desperate if you were asking for business, that it should just all flow. Right. And, um, and he said to me, Steve, I totally get why you're asking that. I would have done the same thing. And it just, that shifted for me. You have to ask for the business. You, you have to do it in your own way. You don't have to be obnoxious or aggressive. But it's, first of all, in New York City, everyone wants to talk about real estate. So that's wonderful. And, um, but you gotta ask for the business. So if you don't ask, they're not gonna give it to you. Well, they may, but, but it's not you'll get happen, more if you ask. So yeah. we have got uh, some time. Anybody has any questions? Let's, uh, we got some questions right here. We got a microphone. It might be easier if we could run around there and grab uh, a few questions here at the end. Good stuff so far? Yeah. Powerful? What was your question right here? And I'll repeat it, yeah. So the, the question is, is there anything left after everything you do, Jackie, in your yeah. price point? <laughs> yeah. For sure, uh, median price point for me, because we deal with the suburbs and Toronto proper, it's 950, but we could go as high as three, four, five million if we had to. Um, yes, everything is calculated. We work with trusted trades, we have for a very long time. So part of it is optics as well, right? The photographer, is he's not $1,000. He's like $250. He's 800 for other people. Right. And I hire him because he works. The same with the cleaners. Like, you know, the, the idea of all of it is prepackaged. We have a budget. We stay within budget for everything. We have to. Um, but we also don't do closing gifts. Okay? Um, that gift for me is long is forgotten, right? but the service, and they said it today, yep. that feeling of taking care of every single piece of that is far more valuable and memorable. Nice. Other questions? Yes. The question is timeline, like someone. How quickly do how you tell quickly people you can get their home on the market? Yep. Because most expireds, when they come off, to be honest, after they've been on for 300 days, a couple more days, they're going to hurt them. <laughs> but, they, <laughs> <laughs> but I usually tell people I have a process, and I start the coming soon, and I want to get photographs, and I want to do it right. So I make sure I try to capture a 7 to 10-day time frame, because 
for us, I don't have either one of their price points. Mine's in the um, middle of the 450 range. And so, but I'm putting on like 15 or 20 of them a month, so I can't do them fast. But if you do the coming soon and start them in Zillow and start them on your website, they're happy with that. So a lot of people get hooked on seasons. Like what she's asking, is the season important to a right. seller? And I think the seasons is more the problem with the agents because I can tell you and Jeff knows during the summer months and during Christmas and stuff, I take so many listings because agents tell people all the time, you should wait till after summer, it's slow. You should wait till after the holidays. But I, I sold a lot of real estate last quarter because of that. But I tell them, I don't worry about the seasons. There's always buyers, there's always sellers. Let's get the house on and find them, but let me do it right. I'm not gonna rush and do what your last agent did. Let me ask Steven one question. One question about, Mar like, I know you've built your team. Mm -hmm. What was the first addition you had to your team? Uh, an assistant. Okay. Who did everything. And would they take off the plate for you? Um, oh, my God. Uh, back then, marketing, they would do showings, everything. It was just an extension of myself. Gotcha. And back then, I used to say, this is, it was, yeah, I've had a number of them, but it, it say it was Scott and Scott is just an extension of me so if you're if he's showing up you're getting me and you know so what did that mean for your business what did it allow you to do oh it freed me up to be out and getting business and asking for business gotcha yeah. a couple other questions right there the questions around coming soon do you use that as a part of your marketing I do I do use the coming soon as part because it gives me some time to get it ready because you, you need a couple days to get your photographer out usually they have to do something to the house so that's a time frame. I mean, I, I had a crazy expired. I took over with the 1.5 million that was on for six years and we redid it. It took me like two weeks to do everything and put it out and I took it over at the same price and we sold it. The first weekend I hit, I had three offers. Fantastic. So it, it helps, it matters. All right, we have got to wrap things up, unfortunately. I know they will make themselves available. One last, what's one big, what's the best advice you've ever gotten in real estate or advice you could give them? What would you give them a little piece of advice? Um, well, two things. Tom said to me early on before I heard him say it to anyone, uh, are you interested or committed? That meant a lot to me. And Vonda said to me, when I was whining about something, uh, don't ask why, ask how. Ooh, so that's good. How about you, Jackie? Focus on your strengths. I think that's the most important thing for me. I'm, there's a lot of things I'm not good at. I focus on what I'm good at, and I do more of that during the day. And I let people do the things I suck at. Focus on what you're good at. How about you, Carolyn? I would just say be confident, whether you feel confident or not, just do it anyway. Take it, do it. All right.